This video is all about the fuel pressure regulator that you find in these early Mercedes and also early Porsche, Volvo, VW, etc. On these older Djectronic cars and also the later Kjectronic cars, the job of the fuel pressure regulator is to keep the fuel pressure constant. It is really important to understand that the fuel pressure on Djectronic and Kjectronic cars does not vary with engine load or speed. On the later Mercedes and on a modern car, your fuel pressure regulator will have a vacuum port on it. And as the engine speed increases, the engine load changes, the vacuum in the fuel pressure regulator changes and the fuel pressure changes. That is not the same on a Djectronic car. The only thing that changes when you put your foot on the accelerator is the amount of air getting into the engine, which in a roundabout way tells the ECU how long to fire the injectors. On the Kjectronic cars, the fuel pressure regulator has an extra nozzle up here, which is a vent nozzle, which many people assume has a vacuum line attached to it, but it doesn't. The nozzle on the Kjectronic cars is purely to vent fumes away from the engine so that if the fuel pressure regulator fails, you don't get fuel spewing all over the hot engine block. Now on these Mercedes here, they have two inputs and one output. So you'll have this connected into the fuel rail, rail and when the pressure gets above about 30 PSI, a diaphragm inside here will open and start putting fuel down here into the return line back into the tank. The way these fuel pressure regulators work is that you undo the locking nut here and you screw this down if you want to increase the fuel pressure in your car and you unwind it if you want to decrease the fuel pressure. When you've got the right fuel pressure you then lock that back up with the locking nut. Adjacent to the fuel pressure regulator you have something that looks almost identical called a fuel damper. Okay the fuel damper does not have an output port at all. The fuel damper is there to damp the vibrations in the fuel that the injectors opening and closing create. If you didn't have a fuel damper there, you would basically get every time the injector opens, the fuel pressure would drop slightly and you would have these variations. You'd have an idle that's going up and down. So this is often listed on eBay and often described as a fuel pressure regulator. And it's not a fuel pressure regulator. It's a fuel pressure damper. If you open this up, it would look almost identical and you could probably modify a fuel pressure damper to a fuel pressure regulator simply by taking out this fitting here and replacing it with a barbed fitting like that. These you'll often find are far more readily available than these fuel pressure regulators. So if you wanted to look OEM with a Bosch fuel pressure regulator and you couldn't get hold of one, you can potentially modify a fuel pressure damper. If you wanted to test your fuel pressure damper, you would do it with a fuel pressure gauge that wasn't damped, i.e. that didn't have oil inside it. For example, this is a damped fuel pressure gauge. You can see it's got liquid inside it and that stops the needle bouncing up and down. But if you wanted to actually test whether your fuel pressure damper was working, you'd have an undamped uh, gauge. And if you saw your needle bumping up and down in line with the injectors opening, you would know that um, your damper was nagged. If you want to ruin the diaphragm in a fuel pressure regulator, what you would do is you would take it out of the car and store it dry. These fuel pressure regulators, if they have petrol inside, the diaphragm will tend to stay soft and last an awful lot longer than if you take them out of the car, you have fuel varnish, etc. evaporating onto that diaphragm, potentially causing a hole in the diaphragm or the diaphragm to crack. If your fuel pressure regulator is faulty or leaking, one of the symptoms will be that your car won't hold fuel pressure. And when you go to start it on a cold morning, you'll find you have to crank it often to actually get it to start and when the car is warm you might find that the car turns over and starts straight away and the way to test that is to connect a fuel pressure gauge and before the cold start injector pressurize the system and then come back in an hour or so and see if that pressure is still there now these will tend to bleed away pressure slowly so if you left your car sitting for days on end don't expect to come back to it turn the key and it to start up first we're going to have a go at starting this car but before we do so i'm going to connect a 
pressure gauge to the car and see what kind of fuel pressure we've got and see if this car is holding fuel pressure. If the car isn't holding fuel pressure, there's a number of different reasons. One, it could be that the diaphragm in your fuel pressure regulator is faulty. Two, it could be that fuel pressure is leaking away through the injectors, so the injectors are not closing completely and dripping fuel into the combustion chamber. And three, the check valve, which is built into the dejectronic fuel pump, and a little ball bearing built into here, should stop fuel flowing back the way it came. And if that check valve is missing or broken, that could be another reason why your car is not holding pressure. On the later Kjectronic cars, they have something called a fuel accumulator, which holds pressure and allows you to do hot starts and cold starts. The other reason that your fuel pressure may be not be what it should is if your fuel pump is worn. I've done a whole video on disassembling one of these fuel pumps, but inside here are some little rollers and a vein. And if those rollers are corroded and they're not making a good vacuum as the pump spins, then this pump will not be able to deliver sufficiently high pressure to get your fuel system up to the pressure it needs to operate. A common mistake people make is they put a modern fuel pump on a dejectronic car. Now, these dejectronic fuel pumps are designed to operate at two to three bar. The modern fuel pumps, such as you get on the 280SL, the Kjectronic up there, operate at five to six bar. And obviously these fuel pumps are designed to operate with these fuel pressure regulators at around two to 2.1 bar, whereas the later style fuel pumps are designed to operate with different fuel pressure regulators at a different higher pressure. And the reason that later cars operated at higher fuel pressure is that you get better fuel economy or fuel efficiency, and it's easier to tune and trim the car at higher pressures because you get better fuel atomization. These dejectronic cars, the fuel pressure is absolutely critical it must be exactly two bar plus or minus 0.1 bar and it should remain constant at all loads on the engine so what we're going to do is put in one of these little uh, fuel pressure gauges just between the inlet line and the um, fuel rail here this is one place to put it another place to put it on this car would be to take the line off the cold start injector and connect it in there before you start disconnecting any fuel lines, you should make sure the system is depressurized. And you could either do that by um, taking the one of the terminals off the fuel pump or taking the fuel pump relay out and cranking the car. Or you can just assume, as we're going to do, that there's no pressure in the system because this car has been sitting overnight. So I'm going to undo that little screw there and hopefully fuel will not come spraying out everywhere. We've got that fuel pressure gauge connected in series in the inlet line. We're just gonna turn the key, which will pressurize the system. Okay, so we're not seeing any pressure on this gauge. As I say, it is an eBay special, so I'm not sure it's actually working, but um, I've bridged the fuel pump relay so that when I turn the key in the ignition now, the fuel pump should run constantly. Okay, we are starting to see a tiny bit of pressure, but not enough. That should be up at two bar. It's a real long shot, but I'm just gonna try putting a bit more fuel in this car to see if that makes any difference. Okay, we've put another five liters of fuel in the car. Fuel pump relay is still bridged. Let's see what happens. I see, that makes a huge difference. Wow. <laughs> okay, don't ever try testing the fuel system when you've only got 10 liters of fuel in there, is the uh, takeaway from this. Wouldn't it be funny if this car started right up? <laughs> Let's give it a go. Wow, so <laughs> the problem before was we just didn't have any fuel in the car. Let's just try that again and see what happens. Now that fuel pressure is bleeding away far too quickly. And that's down to one and a half bars already in less than a few minutes which means that we've either got a fuel leak somewhere, which I can check, or more likely that um, the fuel pressure regulator here is um, leaking and you've got fuel going down, back, returning back into the tank. Or, of course, we could have leaking injectors. It's the next day and you can see that the pressure in the fuel system has spread, bled back down to almost zero. Please don't try anything quite as dangerous or crazy as this at home, but this pipe here is the return pipe to the fuel tank and I've disconnected it here and connected this hollow tube up to here 
And what I want to test is the other end of this rubber hose is connected to the bottom of this fuel pressure regulator. And this fuel pressure regulator should open at above two bar and allow fuel to flow um, back to the tank. Now, if this fuel pressure was leaking, then if we get the fuel pressure up to two bar in the car, what you'd expect to see is fuel in this pipe here. If, on the other hand, the injector seals are leaking, we would not expect to see any fuel here. So I'm just going to do that little test now. So this fuel pressure is at just under two bar here. If that fuel pressure regulator is the reason why that pressure is leaking down, then what we'd expect to see is fuel coming up that line. Wow, look at that fuel creeping up that return line which basically means that is not holding pressure which is not wholly unusual in a DJ electronic system the fuel pressure regulator is absolutely crucial because if that is leaking it means you are not maintaining your two bar of pressure through the lines and therefore the injectors are not getting the correct pressure fuel pressure to work correctly taking the fuel pressure regulator off our parts car and although it doesn't look like much looks can be deceiving and I'm going to put that on the car that we're doing to see if that leaks now that nut does not want to come off and I do not want to risk bending or damaging this because they are very expensive if you can get hold of them so I'm just going to put this whole thing on with that bracket still attached and if it doesn't leak that can take the whole thing off clean it up and then get some penetrating fluid or an impact wrench or something on that at a later stage. So I'm going to whip off this fuel pressure regulator here. You can see that the pressure is zero. So when I undo these fittings, I'm not expecting to see fuel spraying everywhere. So here's our setup. This is the fuel pressure regulator from the parts car. Don't know how well you can see that, but we've got a clear hose connected under to the underside of that. And we're just going to pressurize the fuel system here. We've got a fuel pressure gauge attached here. We're going to bring that up to two bar by turning the key three times in the ignition. One, two, three. As the name implies, this is supposed to regulate the pressure. Now you can see we've got fuel in this line here because this fuel pressure here will have gone over two bar. And as soon as it goes over two bar, the idea of this here is to open a valve up and put the fuel back into the tank via the return line. Now, obviously we've got this going to here, but the question is, will that hold at two bar or will we see this move up as the fuel pressure leaks out through the return line? When you turn the engine off, your system should maintain that two bar fuel pressure. This fuel pressure regulator works far better than a nice shiny one as it happens. You can see, although there is some evidence there that the fuel pressure is bleeding off, you're not actually seeing the needle moving as you were in the other fuel pressure regulator. I'm gonna leave this video here. We've got one step closer by ascertaining that we've now got the correct fuel pressure in the system. We've changed the fuel pump, changed the fuel pump regulator. We've ascertained that just because something is new and shiny looking doesn't mean that it works. I'm gonna have a go at bringing this fuel pressure regulator back to life by running injector cleaner, special type of injector cleaner through here at 30 PSI and seeing if I can clear any debris or any varnish that may have congregated on the diaphragm whilst this car has been sitting. Because as I mentioned, these are phenomenally expensive and that will save me having to um, clean this one here up, but I won't do that in this video. The next video, I'm going to move on to the injectors and I'm gonna clean them and make sure that they're firing at the right time and the right pressure. We'll be showing you how to test injectors, both the electrical impulses and also the spray patterns, etc.